Uh, we'll have Mickey Spagnola in just a second. Uh, we're running a little bit early, surprisingly enough, uh, guys. Uh, so uh, we'll get Mickey in just one second. But uh, I, I, for one, uh, as we talk Cowboys in the segment, Craig, I'm fired up about Cowboys and 49ers this weekend just for the nostalgia bit of it. I've been watching old highlights of the 93 and 94 games uh, over and over and over again, uh, which I which I loved, uh, which uh, as a Cowboys fan were great. And there was some that 38 21 in Dallas in 1994 was one of my favorite football games I've ever watched of all time. And getting to watch highlights of that and Emmett Smith scoring two touchdowns and Alvin Harper had a big long one and Moose scored a touchdown was uh, was absolutely fantastic. And it's been a long time since Cowboys fans have gotten to enjoy that. And they might not enjoy this playoffs, but at least there's some nostalgia this weekend. Yeah, there's nostalgia. I'm not a Cowboys fan, yeah. so I mean, like I, you know, all that stuff that you just ripped off there, uh, and and is personal and, and like a feel good thing. I mean, that may, that's that's not uh, that for me, mm-hmm. but I know what it meant to a lot of people because I grew up uh, in the middle of it, and yeah, those are some great memories. They're also 40 years old at this point, or 30 years old at this point, and uh, no way, where are we? About 25 it's years, 25, 25. Okay, yeah. sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Here's, here's the thing: it can rent a car now without. Yeah. It can par- do anything yeah. legally, basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 25 years since uh, reaching the mountaintop, and uh, you know, it's a team that looks well equipped to to maybe get to that mountaintop once again, or at least have an opportunity to be in the mix. They're they're in it by just being in the playoffs. But uh, it doesn't matter if if you just show up and lose to San Francisco right away. You know that that would be a massive disappointment. So, you know, I was kind of talking to, I guess it was Machota yesterday or whatever, and uh, asking him about the, the buzz uh, leading into this game, and it certainly does have a different feel to it. I mean, that's for sure. It certainly does feel like there's fans anxiously awaiting this one in, in a different kind of way from maybe some of the other previous playoff contests, because I think they know this team is pretty dadgum talented and, and pretty dadgum good. And, uh, you know, whatever version shows up, if it's the the good version that we've seen at times, many times this year, then, yeah, they're going to be right there in the thick of things for that NFC race. So, yeah, very exciting. And uh, you mentioned that nostalgia part of it, and uh, that will be cool. You know, it's it's not quite Charles Haley and Jerry Rice and Deion Sanders and Aikman, Irvin, Emmett, and all those guys, but it's, uh, it's a pretty good litany of stars uh, and uh, two clubs who, who obviously want to win this weekend. So, it, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. A man who remembers those uh, the 90s games between the Cowboys and 49ers very well joins us now, Mickey Spagnola, DallasCowboys.com. Uh, and, Mick, uh, it, it has brought back, you know, a swell of good memories for me uh, of Cowboys and 49ers back in the day. Now, this had, they have nothing to do with one another other than nostalgia, but what are your, your best memories from those, those 90s uh, classic NFC championship games that they played? Well, you know what? If if you look at the the entire uh, history of this playoff uh, between these two teams, man, you can go back to the 1970s, right? Uh, and it seemed like every time they met each other, it was like either one or the other franchise was on the rise uh, trying to take over. Um, the Cowboys, you know, had never gone to a Super Bowl before. Uh, until they beat San Francisco in consecutive NFC title games in 70 and 71. San Francisco had hit a drought, and they beat the Cowboys in 81 with the catch, and that kind of vaulted them into that franchise, uh, you know, into the 80s, kind of dominating. And then in the 90s, it was the Cowboys taking over from San Francisco. Uh, so it seemed like every time they met in the different uh, decade, uh, one or the other was on the rise and they would knock off the, the, the other. So yeah, th- th- it's amazing. And, and, and now here are the Cowboys trying to, you know, kind of rise into things, uh, where San Francisco had been to the Super Bowl most recently. So, uh, I think from what I remember from the nineties was the fact that, uh, when the Cowboys had to play them in that NFC title game in 1992, uh, the talk was, well, you know what? Uh, the Cowboys, it's too soon. They're too young. They're not ready for this. And, you know, when you looked at the game, I could just remember saying, you know what? They might not be too young. They're pretty darn good. And they had gone 13-3 and three that year. So, uh, yeah, I think I remember probably that one uh, the most. Uh, and then maybe the one in 94 that they lost to San Francisco in the title game. The thing that really stuck out was 
they turned the ball over the first three times in that 94 NFC title game uh, and fell behind 21 to nothing. And they came back and they fought. And I learned about the heart of a champion in that game. And even though it was the final minute and they had no shot, I can just remember seeing Aikman firing for the end zone, trying, you know, one more time in vain uh, to try to score to get that game even closer. Mickey, uh, the Cowboys have had a, you know, a handful of appearances over the last decade in the playoffs uh, and managed to you know, have a couple of wins there. But I don't know, it just seems like the buzz heading into this postseason is a little bit different uh, because of this team's makeup and because of the star power and uh, because of just it seems like the belief. I know fans, there's a lot of nervous energy because until they actually go win, you, know, you never quite know and they've been disappointed before. But what kind of a buzz do you sense this week? Is it any different maybe than some of the more recent playoff appearances? Well, you know, if, if, if you look at it, uh, Craig, there was a lot of buzz in 2016, right? Mm-hmm. All these rookies, and they were 13-3, and three, and Dak had taken over for Tony Romo, and, uh, you know, and, and, and they came pretty close, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was uh, Green Bay getting in the way again. Uh, if you look at 2014, they went to Green Bay, you know, and looked like they were going to win that game. There was a lot of buzz. They had already won one playoff game. Uh, and then we saw the no catch game, you know, and, and, and so, yeah. And even going back to 2007, I mean, they were the talk of the league. They were 13 and three. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, they kind of went into that, that first round game against the Giants or actually the division game uh, round, and and Terrell Owens was hurt. He had a high ankle sprain, and they were out without receivers. So, uh, yeah, the buzz to me is about the same. I just think it's sort of recent now that more people realize it than maybe they did. I mean, think about 2007, right? If, if you were born in 2007, you're 14 or 15 years old by now. Oh, Mickey, those things. Every time I think about how long it's been since the Cowboys, you know, did this or did that, it, it, it really does uh, It really does make me feel like I'm only 41. I'm about to be 42. It's still, I say only, but like it still makes me feel so aged. No, no, absolutely. And, and, and you know, and, and, and so there, there are things that, there are weird things that have happened to this team in, in, playoff games where you said gosh that team was really good right I mean how close were they were in 2016 uh how close were they were in 2014 uh and even 20 in 2007 you know they had the ball last and they're throwing for the end zone uh and if they don't have a drop ball earlier in the game you know they're, they're going to beat the Giants but again uh it, it didn't pan out and they just had strange things occurred to them uh, in so many of these playoff games. Do I need to bring up 2006 uh, with the drop uh, the, the drop snap on the field goal that was going to put them in the lead in Seattle? Uh, just weird things uh, would continue to happen to them uh, when it looked like they were on the verge. So who knows? Maybe, maybe the voodoo will change this weekend. So, Mickey, a thrilling way for the 49ers to reach this point, uh, the, the Week 18 contest with the Rams. Uh, Debo Samuel is, is an absolute man-child. I mean, when you're looking at the 49ers, uh, how they're coming in, what they look like, uh, what's sort of your scouting report and, and how they match up with the Cowboys? Yeah, it's it, and you know what? I have to remind myself that Debo Samuel did get drafted to the second round. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Man. All the great draft experts out there, right? And <laughs> yep. this guy went in the second round. Uh, uh, the, I think this game comes down to the to the guys up front, both offensive lines and both defensive lines. That's where this game's going to be won or lost. Uh, I think the Cowboys' offensive line has to be able to do business running the ball a little bit to make them respect the run. So not all they're not doing is getting their defensive ends coming after Dak Prescott. Uh, and then on the other side of the ball, the Cowboys' defensive front has to stop their running game. They want to load up, be physical, and, and run the football and then just throw when they have to with Jimmy Garoppolo with that spraying thumb, right, uh, on his right hand. 
Uh, so I think the guys up front that, that there is all we you know we can talk about all the stars uh, about the versatility uh, of both offenses, uh, but those guys up front. Uh, and, and I know that I don't know if that sounds like a cliche or not or old time football, but they're going to have a lot of say in what happens uh, in this game, uh, both offensive lines. Well, and it looks like Trent Williams is going to be back too. Uh, so that that's going to make it even with all the Cowboys defense with Micah Parsons, everybody coming back, throwing Trent Williams in the mix there makes it that much harder to get back to Jimmy Garoppolo when they do pass. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I, I agree, but I, I would imagine uh, he must have done a pretty good job run blocking for them to yeah. run the ball the way they have. You know, and the other thing I looked at, uh, if you look at their offensive line, Four of the five starters, so the combined games of four of the starters, they only missed two starts. So they've been pretty consistent up front. All they had, all they lost was McGlinchey, uh, the offensive tackle, halfway through the season. Uh, I think he had a torn quad, uh, and, and he missed like the last eight, nine games. But other than that, they only had missed two other games, and one of them was this last week with Trent Williams. Uh, so their continuity uh, up front has been rather amazing uh, compared to what the Cowboys have gone through. Uh, you know, they've, they've lost 18 starts to their offensive line. Uh, so, again, uh, th- this offensive line, if they can get into a, a amount of continuity and, and it's looked like at this point they're as healthy uh, as they've been all season long, uh, maybe that makes a difference. Uh, and it, it looks – Mickey, the last couple of, of weeks, at least when Zeke Elliott gets loose, that he's feeling pretty good. And if they can get him going again, that, that maybe brings back the offense that we saw for the first six, seven weeks of the season. No, absolutely. And, and you know, that's on the offensive line. I mean, he's been running hard. Uh, and, and, and to me, you know, I, I thought it was, you know, I, I get it. He's been wearing a knee brace and the knee hasn't been perfect. But you know what? There hasn't been a lot of perfect holes out there either. Uh, and I think that's one thing uh, the Cowboys have to get back to, uh, creating space for those guys to run the football uh, and not allowing defense to clog things up uh, the way they've been. Uh, and if they can do that, you're exactly right. Then this offense can explode. But that's a pretty tough defensive front uh, to, to have to deal with. Uh, and again, uh, you know, and that's what they want to do. They want to run the ball. Well, the Cowboys defensive front uh, needs to, you know, put their bully pants on. Everybody keeps talking about the, the bullies by the bay and loved Michael Parsons the other day when he said, you know, you, you can't bully a bully, right? And so we'll see who's the bully in this game. Mickey Spagnola, DallasCowboys.com. Mickey, enjoy the game. Uh, I hope I don't get too nostalgic uh, during it, and I hope that uh, we, we can actually see maybe a second playoff game. That, that'd be that fun, would be wouldn't amazing, it? right? Yeah, get past that first one and actually get a second one for a change. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I can do the math on that. That's just something I uh, haven't seen in a long time. All right, Mickey, enjoy the game this weekend. Thanks for hopping on. Okay, good to be with you guys. Mickey Spagnola, DallasCowboys.com with us when we come back. 